Hello there, and welcome to Woodchat. I'm Georgia. And I'm Sam. And as you may be able to hear, we're taking a bit of a stroll through a surprisingly peaceful area of woodland just on the outskirts of Melbourne. Now, we can't always see, hear or smell them, but the air in these sorts of environments, and pretty much everywhere actually, is home to all kinds of pests and pathogens. But depending on the nature and location of the pest, it can have big implications for our trees and plants. And for that reason, in a pretty unique move, Forest and Wood Products Australia has joined forces with other representatives from Australia's agriculture and horticulture industries in the development of a program that could change and speed up the way the presence of these potential threats are detected. The program will use revolutionary new technology to rapidly monitor and report the presence of particular airborne pests and diseases it really is quite the impressive lineup of collaborators, with Horticulture Innovation Australia taking the lead, alongside a total of 16 other partner organisations, of which Forest and Wood Products Australia is one. This involvement will ensure the potential benefits of the project to the forestry industry are maximised. But before we consider the role of Forest and Wood Products Australia and the benefits to forestry, let's take a more general look at the project. We popped in to meet with Jessica Holliday from Horticulture Innovation Australia to get more of a sense of what this project is and what it's hoped will be achieved. Can you tell me a bit about your involvement with the IMAP Pest Sentinel Surveillance Project? Horticulture Innovation Australia is the lead RDC agency on IMAP pests. It's a cross-sectoral rd and initiative. It involves all of the plant-based RDCs and as the lead agency, Hort Innovation is responsible for managing the, the project and the collaboration and all the parties involved. And so then taking a step back, okay. would you be able to just give me a snapshot of what the project's all about. It brings together research scientists, governments and all plant-based RDCs, as I said, and also engagement and extension specialists. Our overall long-term goal is to actually improve plant pest management decision-making. And we're doing that through the provision of accurate and rapid plant pest and disease dynamic information. What prompted the project? The Rural R&D for Profit Scheme that is part of the Department of Agriculture. It's designed to support industry with a focus on improving productivity and profitability. So that scheme was identified as a way to address this problem. Back in late 2017, some of the RDCs involved got together to to design a cross-industry collaboration to ultimately enhance pest management and recognising that sampling the air affects lots of different industries, they're geographically co-located. So there's, there, there was a need to, to address the problem and to address it in, in a cross-sectoral manner. And so that level of collaboration, is that something that is quite unusual? Like, do you see that sort of thing it happening is. a lot? Yeah. It's quite a unique collaboration mm. and it's quite a vast collaboration as well it, it it weaves in a lot of different partners and it's the first time that all plant-based rdcs have actually got together in in this in this formal uh way wow okay mm. yeah so it's been a great buy-in then from yeah willing parties to to get involved and in. yes because obviously yes. they don't see the, the, the mutual benefits. That's right. The Department of Agriculture, who are one of the big investors in this project through the Rural R&D for Profit Scheme, recognise this as quite a flagship project. And do you think then, based on the successful outcomes of, uh, of, of this uh, project, or the hopeful mm-hmm. successful outcomes of this project, do you, is the hope that that might open the door to other projects with a collaboration on this sort of scale? Absolutely. We are aiming to validate a proof of concept system. So we're very much in the research space. We'll be in the research space for the for the whole term of this project. We hope that 
we can continue to do this really important research and extend the work um, into the future because it really is a 10, 15 year plan that we're working towards. We're not, we're not offering some sort of nirvana in pest management at this point. We're doing research that we can hopefully demonstrate to be useful to all of our plant-based industries. Yeah. Where is the research at now and what are the next steps? We are about two years into a five-year initiative. We are at a point right now where we have publicly launched the what we're calling the Sentinel device, which is a trailer-based system that will be deployed in field and it incorporates all of the different sampling devices that collect the samples and those samples are then dispatched to the laboratories where they're analysed and that then generates the data that we curate and present in a format suitable for our various industries. What will the benefits be to the many industries that are involved? That information could be used by industry stakeholders um, to, to guide the direction or the intensity of scouting efforts and, and pest control activities. The system could also facilitate a coordinated response to biosecurity efforts uh, during exotic pest and disease incursions. So it has a pest management focus first and foremost, yeah. but it could also be useful in a biosecurity context yeah. as well. So that would presumably lead to, a, you would think, a, a stronger response. Absolutely. We'd like to be able to deploy these sentinels in field and have them provide more rapid and accurate information to end users and stakeholders so that they can respond faster. There are lots of diseases, for example, that don't show any symptoms on, on a crop until it's a well-established disease. So this has, the, this has the power to detect those in the earlier stages and thereby providing a, a faster means to actually tackle those really important threats. So what exactly is an IMAP Pests Sentinel and how does it work? Georgia called Rowan Kimber, research scientist at the South Australian Research and Development Institute and the brains behind the equipment to find out more. Are you able to give me an overview of what your involvement has been with this particular project? The IMAP Pests project is uh, really um, taking up some new and uh, pretty sophisticated technologies in the way that we we monitor pests and diseases. My role within the project has been to uh, develop a lot of those new technologies for spore trapping, which is just the uh, the term we use for capturing airborne spores or fungal spores, as well as uh, flying insect trapping. A key aspect of this project is uh, the IMAP Pest Sentinel. It's a mobile device. Uh, when I say mobile, it's just deployable. We can move it into a different location at different times of the year and different agricultural sectors. And this Sentinel combines specialised air sampling equipment and automation technology. What is unique about these Sentinels? What's particularly unique about the Sentinel is that this has never really been done in the world before, where we have these co-located air samplers all in one unit that is automated and controls all of these samplers in, in a fairly smart way. So we can we can capture these pests and diseases not just on just daily monitoring, but we can also capture them according to smart parameters such as temperature, humidity, wind speed, wind direction. So not only are we, we capturing them to identify and report them, but we're also understanding the conditions in which they've been caught and, uh, and the way that they actually move and disperse through the air. So once the examples have been captured, what happens next? The Sentinel will produce physical samples of small pots, small vials that are filled with fungal spores or um, small insects and, um, and we'll be using highly accurate techniques and technologies to not only identify the important or priority targets that we've caught within those vials or pots but also to speed up the, the method of detection to uh, identify these pests and deliver this information through to the decision makers. A number of these technologies or techniques have been uh, around for a little while, but they've not normally been sort of brought together in this coordinated fashion. We are able to um, 
merge both the collection data from the Sentinel and the diagnostics data from the lab where those physical samples have been taken to and we merge those two data sets together so we can have a extensive uh, data and diagnostics information that is reported. What stage in the process are you at right now? So at this stage we have just completed the first Sentinel prototype and then we're also in the process of building a, um, a second prototype Sentinel which is going to be uh, transported up into Queensland to test the, the Sentinel how it works in more um, uh, adverse conditions such as really high rainfall and high, uh, high temperatures, high humidity before we then um, uh, review their designs and then build another six sentinels which will be then deployed across Australia in different locations and different agricultural sectors. Ultimately, what do you foresee as being the main benefits of this technology? What it's all about is just the fact that good information and, and more accurate information can, can lead to better decision making and, and that can only be a benefit to um, both profitability, sustainability and uh, effectiveness. Have you had much feedback from the industry partners? Yeah, look, um, from the onset, we have always been wanting to engage with our major agricultural sectors that are there, which are not only um, interested in this data set, but they have invested in this. And uh, the forestry industry is, is one of those. What we first did was approach these industries and said, you tell us the pest and disease information that you want to uh, know about. We formulated a priority pest and disease list uh, in direct response to to, um, to the, that feedback and uh, and, and they tend to be the pests and diseases that are most impacting on, on what it is in their production or, uh, or quality of produce. We will uh, also be looking to establish uh, means and mechanisms for the industries to re-engage with us to uh, better refine that information flow. So that may well be some digital platforms which allow users uh, on the ground to, uh, to help ground truth the information that we're delivering as well as um, provide vital information about the pest and disease incursions um, at that ground level in uh, proximity to the, the sentinel activity. Dr Rowan Kimber there. He gave us an excellent description of the Sentinels and what they'll be doing once deployed, but I really wanted to see one for myself. Fortunately, Jess was able to track down the prototype for me and kindly gave me the guided tour. So Jess has brought me to have a look at what would it be fair to say is the centrepiece of the research at this point? That is, that is fair to say. We've got one right here. And just for the, uh, the benefit of the listener, what I'm seeing is a, uh, a, a green box um, on wheels, so obviously mobile, with a whole bunch of weird and wonderful bits and pieces of really impressive looking equipment jutting off um, the top of it. So Jess, if you could maybe just talk us through what we're looking at here. Sure, so it's a trailer based system and it, it incorporates, as you can see on the roof line of the trailer, a number of sampling devices. Yep, okay. As well as a climate monitoring pole here, and that captures all of the climatic parameters, yep. along with the biological samples, insects and pathogens, they're being funneled down into into the box. Oh right. So it's, so the, the trap is this is, is the trap up here at the top? That's is right. That, right. Yep. So there are four traps. Yep. Uh, they sample for different things. We've got two fungal spore traps here. So yep. they're picking up the microscopic pathogens, oh, okay. diseases yep. in the air. This uh, triangular shaped device on top actually pops up six metres into oh, the air. Oh, right, okay, so it extends up. That's right, it, ex yeah. it extends up in uh, a very impressive manner. Watching the six metre six meter tall pop-up insect sampler is, is quite a sight to behold. So let yeah. me show you that, okay. Sam. Oh, amazing. It's quite impressive and yeah. it's quite noisy. Okay. Oh, wow. I, go, I was not expecting it to go that tall. No, that's right, it okay. does. <laughs> And is that so? Once that is up that high, is that then on the lookout for different types of? Pests? It is so. So it's looking to sample insects that fly in that 
in that higher zone yeah, than, than the yeah. smaller insect sampler can, can yep. target. Yep. So we're looking at migratory species. Yep. Uh, that's remotely handled as well. So yep. we can do that from a computer back in the office. Uh, we can control that. Yep. And similarly, when the wind speed gets too high, for example, we would retract that. So that would that mean you have. could send these into really remote areas then and that's still right. have control over what they're doing that's right that's the idea and also the the housekeeping yeah. data for the yeah. sentinels so for example if the if the fans switch off or something goes wrong mm. we we get that fed real time back to the office so we can actually monitor how the sentinels performing out in the field everything collects down into pots and vials mm that are barcoded automatically so we have a means to trace those samples as they make their way to the lab mm. uh, and then they're, they're, they're married up with the data that's being captured by the climate monitoring system yep. so that we have a way to say for example we detected these pests at this geographic location and these are the environmental parameters that are associated with that sample. Right, so you get a full picture. A full picture, scenario. that's right. At this stage, we're looking at visiting the Sentinel on a weekly basis to retrieve the samples that have been collected. Yep. They will then be packaged up and immediately dispatched to our partner laboratories for visual inspection, in the case of the insects, and molecular analysis yeah. as well so based on genetics yeah. once the samples have gone through the workflow in the laboratory that data is then fed real time to a cloud-based system and it's at that point that we can visualize that information and simplify it and put it in a format suitable for each of our different industry partners and is it unique like is there anything like this anywhere else in the world no. Wow, okay. There isn't. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a world first mobile sampling device. Yep, yeah. fantastic. And of course, we couldn't put together a Woodchat episode without taking a moment to consider what impact this technology might have on the forest industry specifically. I gave Jodie Mason, Forest Research Manager at Forest and Wood Products Australia, a call to get her insights. So FWPA is one of the partners in the project, so we've funded part of it and we have contributed a list of some of our high priority pests which are able to be captured by the sentinel trap. Some of those are myrtle rust, Phytophthora, which are pathogens and then some eucalypt leaf beetles and the work hasn't started yet on the forestry pests but they're scheduled for the next couple of years of the project. And so ultimately then, what are the hopeful benefits of this project to the forestry industry? There are the benefits specifically to forestry, which would be a better understanding of, of the types of traps that are useful in capturing data about our particular pests, potentially also feeding into models of population dynamics overlaid with weather information and to be able to notify forest managers of the pest and the level of pest in the area. I think one of the other advantages is that this project is creating a lot of, fostering a lot of collaboration between the different parties. So you've got state government agencies that are developing the diagnostics, talking to each other regularly about this project and collaboratively developing diagnostic protocols and working through how best to tackle the work, I suppose, increasing the, the communication that's going on between the different parties that are involved in the project. Would you say that's quite unusual? Well, you don't get so much cross-collaboration in normal day-to-day -day work. I think that's the, that's the difference. Having to come together around this project and work through some of the issues uh, around diagnostics and there's a lot more sharing of information than probably happens on the day-to-day -day scale. Yeah, I think, it, I think it's got to benefit everyone in the long run. We also spoke to Agriculture Victoria PhD candidate Conrad Trollope, whose work will focus around taking the samples collected by the Sentinels and analysing them in a laboratory. Can you tell us about the involvement of yourself and Agriculture Victoria in this project? Um, in terms of Agriculture Victoria, they're really focusing on the development of using molecular techniques such as next generation sequencing to identify multiple 
pest or pathogen species within a single test. My involvement and my project for my PhD is a little bit more uh, focused on the investigation and optimizing this type of technology um, for fungal surveillance. So if the insect is something we can collect, then there's potentially other microbes that are involved um, that cause disease and other problems. So I'm really going to be looking and targeting on that. So if you could just kind of talk us through your processes then. So the samples uh, that the sentinels collect, they come to you. What are the steps that are taken from there? So once we receive a sample from the sentinel, uh, the entomologist group will go through it. And we've developed in-house this extraction protocol um, that doesn't destroy the insects because normally when you do these extractions you really homogenize the sample um, and so for example later on if they need to reassess the trap sample they actually can go back and do morphological identification of every insect in there. Once we do the DNA extractions essentially we we use uh, the DNA and we look for specific markers within the DNA to identify what species are inside the trap. Yeah, we're exploring and optimizing uh, the limits of that the limits of that detection. So, you know, what can we identify and, you know, to what level. If we can use this technology to say, for example, how much out of that sample what proportion is actually the pathogen and, and how much of a threat maybe it poses in that way. And what other advantages are there of receiving samples from this type of sentinel? You are able to factor in a lot more metadata with your sampling, which is really useful for matching your sample collection to things like disease cycles. Um, you need context there. So just getting that sequence, what does that mean, you know? And that's where those type of data points help because if it starts matching life cycles or you're able to track it a little bit more in a targeted and more uh, detailed way um, or it gives you more confidence about the information you're getting. It's really amazing to see such a diverse cross-section of industries collaborating in this way. Well, it's like the old saying, isn't it? Together we're stronger than the sum of our individual parts. That's so true. By pulling funding, expertise, skills and ideas in this way, I guess the benefits will be magnified and enjoyed by all. We'll definitely be keeping an eye on this one. And that's it for another edition of Woodchat. We hope you enjoyed it and that you'll join us again next time. <laughs>